Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Muse Jester. My name is Junior, and this time we're going to be reviewing Mayfex's Cyborg Superman. Here's the box. You can see it's all kind of crunched up. I got this for around $92, $98. I guess that's a good price, uh, seeing as how uh, some of the places I've seen, it goes for $120. <laughs> And I did get very very late in the game, so um, I'm I could have if I could have gotten it cheaper, I would have. <laughs> Trust me, I would have. I, I looked and looked. All right, let's go ahead and open it up and uh, see what happens. I've shown you the box all around. Uh, you know me with boxes. I'll be right back. So we're back. Um, I got steel for like sixty eight dollars or sixty five dollars. Um, and on Amazon, and it was stipulated that the uh, it was the box was damaged, it's gonna come in a different box. And it said something like it didn't, it's not the, the base and all that stuff was missing. And I just realized now, after opening up the uh, the Cyborg Superman, uh, which had this base over here, it is missing a base. Uh, I could have sworn that when I was watching the video from The Amazing. Uh, he didn't showcase this, so I thought that was just an extra stuff. But, you know, I don't really mind. Um, for a cheaper price for what I got for missing this, out, missing this, eh, I'm okay with it. <laughs> um, if I could have gotten this for $65 without the box and without this, I would have grabbed it. <laughs> I, I just want the toy. So, uh, yeah, about that. Here's a figure, untouched, undone, without anything... It's crappy looking. The, the cape is all over the place. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of this cape. Um, but you need to learn how to kind of mess around with it. So uh, let me mess around with it. Make it a little bit more presentable. And I'll be right back. Alright, so let's address the first very thing that pops to my mind. The cape. This cape sucks. <laughs> For this price range, I feel like there's a better solution that they could have done. Unlike with steel, where the bulkiness of the cape can be utilized to accentuate the bulkiness of the character, um, this one, as much as you try to, you just can't. I feel like what the mistake they did was they tried to do way too much for this cape. This The wire is too much where... It, not only does it go down here, but it drapes down here. This has always been a problem to wire capes. And then they did this wire thing over here as well. The problem with this one is like, this is almost like a free floating cape where it's not attached here. So you don't have the anchor to make this stick to whatever you're trying to sculpt in. And I feel like the, the, the area that they did to do for this cape is way too much. Let me just spread it out. And then I'm going to have to, oh my god, then I'm going to have to plate it up again. See, that's way too much cape for this. You don't need, you don't really need that. Um, now, if this had not been wired, then this much cape would have presented itself uh, as a good naturally folding cape. Because it's fairly heavy material and it would have draped naturally. And probably well but for something like this where you're trying to create a, a wired version I feel like by having this much of a diameter or this much of material and then you wiring it up all you're doing is you have to fold each and every one of this to make it fit into that look this is what you're gonna have to do you're gonna have to fold it like that because that's how that's why when you first buy it it's the, this is the way it's presented so let me fold it up again let, let me let, make it look presentable again and i'll be right back yeah man that cape was brutal the worst part of it is that it's one of the first thing right out of the door you're gonna have to deal with it because um you you just have to in order and then make the whole thing presentable so the first experience you're ever going to get out of this figure is fixing the stupid cape to something that's slightly, slightly um, presentable. This took me basically like 10 minutes just to pleat it up like that again. And even with that, even if you can make this somehow fold naturally, you're still having to deal with this look. Yeah. 
So anyway, let's uh, let's try to look past beyond that and let's look at the sculpt of this figure. There is the portrait for Cyborg Superman. Again, fully painted. Not an inch of it uh, being left with bare plastic. You can see the two-tone going on in the hair with the blues and not the solid black. You get the red in the chin and in the eyes, the wash in the teeth, the wash around those crevices in the skull. The S emblem, I'm going to talk about that later on, but you do have the mechanical sculpting going on and everything, the detail. Look at that, those cables all around the back. Again, when it comes to sculpting, you cannot fault Mafex to have a very, very presentable figure. And then let's deal with the articulation now. The head again moves back and down, goes down really well. Nice movement. And then you see the movement in the neck as well. So it's got its own articulation. The arms, it has this um, floating shoulder thing. I believe this is where McFarlane copied his own, but... Um, and I kind of wish G.I. Joe would do this. Um, they're kind of doing that, but it's not floating. But I feel like the floating one gives you a little bit more range. I don't know why. It has a drop down on the shoulder like that. Rotation. Little biceps. Does that much range. And then the ball joints on the wrist. Look at all that rotation. Look at all that movement that you're getting, man. Really nice. And then the torso. You can pretty much get whatever you need in terms of movement and pose for this torso. Uh, again, a drop down on the uh, legs to make you kick all the way up like so. It's kind of weird. I, this is the first time I've noticed that the legs aren't completely straight. It does have a natural curve to it. Uh, the knees uh, are double jointed, but will only go that much. Um, also notice there's no thigh cut, so there's no thigh swivel. Even with this one, even though that's a naturally good place to put it in, there isn't any. There's no boot cut or anything like that. So that's kind of a shame. Uh, that's, I mean, I guess you can still kind of get it to pose like that if you ever need to. Um, and then the angle over here uh, goes up like that. It's got a toe pivot. I forgot to mention that on steel. It does have an ankle swivel as well. One thing of note for the accessories, it does not come with a secondary or any other portraits. It just comes with that one. That's kind of disappointing for the price range that we should that we're paying for. It should have multiple portraits. It does come with a replaceable battery or a replaceable weapons arm. And then it comes with a blast effect as well. Right, so it does plug in uh, some blast effects over there. And it looks like it connects to the elbow. Yeah, pulls off the elbow over there. And you just plug it in. And the joint is only friction based, but because it's light up, it there's no, you know, it does hold a pose. You just don't want to be moving it too much, but it is it is capable of holding the pose. That's the only reason why it does sag is because you have these extended parts over there. That's kind of cool to have though, that look over here. Yeah. But um, I'm used to seeing Cyborg Superman in his just usual look. So I think I'm just going to be keeping him um, like this. 
that's one of the things I did notice too. This guy, the the ankles, it's holding, but it's. I wish it could have been a little bit more stronger. So one of the things I would add, if you know, for the price we're paying, ratchets would be nice. Uh, it comes with multiple pairs of hands again, the straight flying hands, as you can see. The kind of relaxed hands, left and right. The, I guess this would be the grabbing hands, left and right. A pointed fist and a fist this is this is different from the closed one as you can see the closed one is completely closed this one's a little bit i think it was from the video of the amazing who said the reason why this thing has a slight opening is for holding the cape i suppose um the other accessories i probably would have liked to have seen with this guy is the american flag because there is that iconic pose where he's holding the american flag I guess I could just buy something, but at the same time, for a hundred dollars, that would have been nice to have. Yeah, so that's basically it for the looks and the accessories. Let's bring in its competitor. The main thing is this is DC Direct's um, Cyborg Superman. This is the go-to figure when I'm looking when I'm thinking of this figure. Oh, he's been kind of scratched up a little bit. What? Uh, so as you can see from the S emblem, the S emblem over here has a darker picture over here. That's the way it is drawn in the comic books. I'm going to tell you right now, look-wise, this is still capturing um, what I think of when I think of these characters. Um, this guy is more closer to what I see in terms of Dan Jurgens' uh, artwork. I'm going to have to say this, but the original DC Direct still trumps it, man. It's I look at it and I see Dan Jurgens, uh Dan Jurgens, Jurgens artwork. That's the way I see it. This is more of a a manga nice Japanese styled version. I'm sorry. This guy still trumps it. He it is just I see and, and then when you see the Superman of this one, you, you just can't you, you just have to admit it. It's 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 literally being taken out of Dan Jurgens' um, art style. So, so I DC Direct still trumps it in terms of the silhouette, in terms of the in terms of the looks. This is good, but I still feel like this thing is like it's just so much like straight out of the comic book. So I'll, I'm never gonna get rid of these guys. Even the one from the steel one, even this one, remember I said he, it, it uh, basically copies the style of the artist. You can tell it's a different type of styles, right? Because this was done from Dan Jurgens, and this is from John Bogdanove. I can't remember. Where steel, he draws his characters more angular. Uh, this is more softer, but he has his arting, his writing, his drawing style is angular, long in the face. Like this is basically steel the way he drew it. Anyway, um, so that was the other reason why I was kind of holding off on Mayfex because I still have these, and these these really captured uh, the style of the artist, the style of the comic books, uh, and this was good. It's the modernized version. It's very, very articulated, you know. Um, but uh, it's if they had done this with this, then that would have been fine. But this is more, this is more Mafex style. That's why, that's why um, when it comes to looking for the Superman version, I might be okay in getting the one from the Hush series because um, I feel like this looks like the Hush character. The Hush Superman. So he will fit just fine here. So I don't have to wait, you know. Um, but this is the modernized version. Like I said, the price is $100. Um, but 
this is at this point the ultimate version for me to get uh, when it comes to these characters. One thing I I do note is this this gap going on with the waist. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that. I can see why you, you get a lot of movement because of that. Um, but you know, again, for the price that we're paying for a hundred dollars, there's see the thing of it is I'm gonna go back to McFarland. I hate doing this. McFarland's quality did change a little bit throughout time, but there were indications in his line that were faults, but they were easy to overlook at the $19 range because for $19 compared to what was going on with G.I. Joe and everything, um, even though the scale was off, uh, even though it's not the exact copy that we did, I was more forgiving because $19, it's it's when he started going up in price from $24 to $30 to $39, then it's not as easy to forgive the faults that was inherent in this line. This is the same thing. So going back to Mafex, there are a few things um, that is easily overlooked. One being that this is the Mafex version of... Of these characters they the inherent design they've captured but the inherent character style of the artist they did not this is the mafex version this is the dc direct version according to the artist um that they were copying from this is dan jurgens the other one's not john john bogdanovi i'm always gonna get stuck on that name um this there's no artist tied into this one um so for the hundred dollar price range i am more critical of the fact that this cape could have been done better it just could have been done better i'm more critical of the fact that they didn't copy the artist style but this is still a pretty dang good representation of a superman figure that will do just about anything you can think of at the $100 range, I'm more critical of the fact that we only have one sculpt, one portrait, while as steel, which basically has a lot of the stuff that's coming with this one, comes with three. It's just that for $100, I feel like, give me a little bit more because I'm not as satisfied with this figure as I was with steel, because steel I got for $68, and I got all that stuff for $68, whereas this one I had to pay $100, and I got less for $400. And it's the same company. And this is the other reason why I was kind of holding off on Mafex. Now, as I said, I'm already into this line. I'm not gonna get any other Mafex figures, except to this one, uh, and that's the reason why I was willing to go to the high price of a hundred dollars because after this i'm off of mafex uh i just don't see anything where i'm willing to spend a hundred dollars in order to get um all these figures or um, all this representation now would i go the mezco route is that the ultimate version of this one i don't know um so far it'll be i'll have to think about it but um, this is a hundred dollars. Mezco will probably around hundred and twenty dollars. I'll compare the accessories that they're gonna come up with this in terms of this one, because as far as I'm concerned, this is really good over it. This is really good. I just hate this this stupid cape, but I know Mezco does a better job with the cape. This I don't know why Mafex did this with their cape. Uh, with this one, I might actually just customize my own but the problem is i won't be able to get that s shield or what i'll probably do is i'll pull off the stupid wire and make my own wire and make this fit a little bit better the problem is i still hate the fact of how they designed this pleats and this thing over here so i don't know it's a hundred dollars am i willing to customize a hundred dollar figure well, look at my vamp. <laughs> That's a hundred dollar toy, and I did customize it and cut. I probably will because my toys are my toys. I'm not thinking of selling it, so I might go ahead and cut off some of this stupid wire, make it a little bit more better. And if I do, I'll post a video of it, and then you guys can decide whether it's worth doing it to your Mayfix as well or not.
But that's it for my review of Mayfex's uh, uh, Cyborg Superman. Is it worth the $100? Uh, I'm grading this a little bit lower than Steel. I feel the value of Steel with its price is good. Because remember, this is only $68. This one, the value is lower than the price. Because this price is $100. And you're getting less. And now you have to deal with this cape. And um, yeah, this one... This one, what can I say? This is a group of five figures. If you got one, you have to get the rest of it. Mm, that's the way I think about it. So, you know, if you feel like one of these figures is not doing the job that you want, then I suggest don't get into this line. Even though this is a good figure, if, you, if you're going to end up getting the rest of it and then you're not happy with the rest of it, don't get into this line. You know, because it's a hundred dollars. Um, I already went ahead and committed myself to <laughs> to it, <laughs> and I do love Superman. So, um, what can I say? Uh, I am still gonna stick with the pre-orders, but I'm gonna be keeping an eye on Mezco. Um, the thing is with Mezco, as long as it's had, you don't deal with anything rubber from them. It's a good product. It's a solid product. It's just that I just don't like the design. <sighs> Maybe I'll... Yeah, I'm going to do a, another product review of Mesco to give them so I can reevaluate their standing in my collection because I still have not opened my Superman Deluxe in a tin can and I still haven't reviewed that. Uh, it's still sitting somewhere, which is really weird because it's Superman. I should... I should have opened it up. But anyway, that's it for my review of Mayfex's uh, Cyborg Superman. Thank you for watching. I hope this kind of helped you out a little bit. I mean, it's a pricey, it's a pricey toy. So make your decisions uh, upon the criteria that you're setting on yourself. But uh, yeah, I'll see you guys soon. And you have a nice day. Bye. All right, guys, really quickly. I'm not sure if you guys are still here with me. Um, but here's what I did. Look at the big difference in that. So, I cut off the one on this side. So now it lays flat like that. And this is as flat as I can make this one with this one. I don't understand why they had to do that. I really don't. And it's really simple. So this thing, they actually glued it to this part. Which basically leaves you this one flap that you need to cut off. And look, for the same amount that the reason why they did this, right? So you can keep that cape up. Look at this. Look, this thing is basically staying up because this length of wire that they put in here is so strong. You really don't need that sec that other part over there if you want for some reason to keep this cape up like that. So... Uh, yeah, so I went ahead and cut it. Uh, let me show you. Just pull this off. It's all just taped. And then you'll see that the only thing connecting this is that small flap of cloth. And you just got to cut it. So, I hope that helped.